Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly here, and today I am going to be showing you how to validate an IPv4 address using Java. So, by validate I mean checking if the input is in a correct format, not that it exists. If you want to check if an address exists and that you can reach it, click the eye up in the corner, there's a tutorial on how to do that. And if you want to know the ping time of reaching that address, Click this eye up in the corner, and I'll show you how to do that. But they were just checking that an input is reasonable, not that it exists. So by valid IPv4, I'm going to be using this set of rules. It's going to be a string in the following format. x dot x dot x dot x, where x is an octet and must be an integer between 0 and 255. So let's get right into how we're going to validate it. So we're going to do public static boolean, where we're going to return a true or a false. True being valid, false being invalid. The function is going to be called isValidIPv4, and obviously uh, the one parameter is going to be the address we want to validate. So the first step we want to quickly do is we want to do a try-catch statement. We want to do try, and then catch exception e. Then we want to do system.printline e so we can print out the error message, which might give us a clue as to why something went wrong and therefore the IP address is invalid. And we want to return false because obviously we're going to have a return true statement in the try. And obviously if there's a if the catch occurs, that means something went wrong in the try. Therefore we want to return false because it's invalid. So before we go looking at the actual numbers, we want to make sure that we have the right amount of dots or they might be called periods to some and so what we're going to do so we're going to do int period count equals zero then we're going to do a for loop and we're literally going to loop through every character in this string and if that character is a is a dot we do period count plus plus pretty simple stuff we're just going to count how many dots there are in the string and then what we're going to do is, if period count is not equal to 3, return false. I don't care what values are in this IP address. If the dot or period count is not equal to 3, then it can't be valid regardless of the rest of the IP address. So we're going to be returning a false here. After we've concluded that we have three dots, what we're going to do is we're going to create another, we're going to create a string array. It's going to be called IP nums and it's going to be equal address which is our string up here dot split slash slash dot so we're basically going to be using the dot as a delimiter and we're going to split up each octet into its own element in an array and you might be thinking okay that makes sense why are you doing slash slash dot well basically for the split function dot is a special meta character which matches everything Therefore, we need to actually use two slashes before the dots to actually split by dots. I'm not going to go into too much more detail about it, but that's why we're using two slashes as opposed to just a dot on its own. So you do slash slash dot. And that's going to split up each octet into its own element of an array. If you want to, you can even do system.printline arrays.toString ip nums and you'll see it happen. In fact, we're going to but we also need to right click and click on fix imports and make sure you import java.util.arrays just so you can understand what's going on there. Now, below our isValidIPv4 function, we're going to make a new function. It's going to be called, it's going to be a public static int process octet string number. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do int result. We're going to do try catch and we're going to do result equals integer dot int number. So we've created this function to basically try and convert a string number or an octet into an integer. And if it converts to an integer, result is equal to integer, then we can return the result here. If the catch code is executed, we're going to return a minus one because we couldn't convert it successfully. And we want something to tell the code, yo, this wasn't valid. And since, well, we can't have negative numbers, minus one's a pretty good number to check for if, something go if something's not what we want. So the next thing we're going to do is, back in our isValidIPv4 function, we are going to be doing a for loop. And don't worry, this looks complicated, but I'm going to break it down for you. 
So we're going to do for int i equals zero, i less than ip nums dot length i plus plus. So we're going to be looping through each octet individually in our ip nums array. Then we're going to do if ip nums is n not equal to zero. So just to be clear, what we're doing here is we don't want to allow for padding of zeros. And what I mean is zero, zero, one is technically one. However, I don't want to consider that valid the zero, zero, one. So we need to basically check if there are any zeros that shouldn't be there. So what we can do is firstly, we're going to check if the octet itself isn't equal to zero, because if it's zero on its own, that's allowed. However, if it's not equal to zero, that means this is a number that's not zero. So what we can then do is we can do if IP nums i char at zero equals zero. So what we're doing is we're just going to check. So if the octet isn't zero, we're going to check if the first char if the first digit or character of that octet is zero. If it is, it's invalid. And you might be thinking, but Max, what if there's five zeros? Well, firstly, I don't think that's possible on an IP address, but if it's like two zeros, then a, num then a one, that's still going to be invalid because of that first zero. We only need to check for one zero before any number. We don't need to check for all the zeros. I don't care how many there are. If there's at least one zero, that's padding. I don't want it. And then we can just return false because there's no redeeming this IP address. It's invalid regardless of what we do. Then we can do int current num equals process octex ip num i. So we're just then going to try and convert it into an integer. Now you might be thinking, but Max, what if it be, what if we put in a negative number? That's fine. Honestly, I couldn't care less if you put in a negative number. I mean, technically, if it's not a valid um, integer, it becomes minus one. And I honestly couldn't care what negative there is because then we've got a little range check. If the current number is greater than 255, or it's less than zero, return false. Because these octets are 8-bit, therefore they can only be between zero and 255. So they can be zero, 255, any number in between, but anything less than or greater than that range, it's invalid. Regardless of the rest of the numbers in the IP, they're invalid. So you return false. After that for loop, we do a return true statement because it's passed all of the validation, therefore it's valid. And that's it for this tutorial. So we're going to go to the top and we're going to just go through some IP addresses. Firstly, 800000. Let's try it and hit play. And if you look at the output, you can see how we split up or split up this IP address with the dots because the eight is is on its own the zero is on its own the zero is on its own and the other zero is on its own and it says true because it's valid what if we put a zero before the eight well let's see what happens it's false because there's a there's a bit of padding on the front but what if we put 80 instead Well, it's true because that's allowed. It's only when it's before the number I consider it padding that we don't want. What if we put double zero? Well, it's false because when we do the check, we're checking if an element is equal to zero, but that doesn't mean it's equal to double zero because it's a string check. Now let's try some random address I found on the internet. And it's true, because all of these match the criteria of a valid password. Now let's put a negative number in there and see what happens. Well, it says false, because you can't have a negative. Now let's do... Now let's do... Dot, 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 seven, and see what happens. Well, it's invalid. And it even gives an exception here because the, the split didn't go too well because it's invalid. As you can see down there. Now let's try a number. 1.1.1.1.1. So we're going to have four dots as opposed to three. And it's false because it's got more than three. Now let's do 1.1 and see what happens. Still invalid. 
So thanks for being a great audience, be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more Java tutorials. Thanks for being a great audience.